Good morning. I'm John Vogels. I'm the Upper School Principal. Great to be here with you today to speak about a topic that's been very important in my life, and that's creativity. And I want to encourage you to think about your own creativity, and I hope keep it alive and well in your own life. So I started, with my, the title of my talk is based on a quote by Dorothy Parker. She's an American author from the early part of the 20th century, who's well known for her writing, but maybe even better known for her uh, clever phrases about the writing process. And one of the phrases she has used is that creativity is a wild mind and a disciplined eye. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about what I think that means. But before we get into that, let's think about why does creativity even matter? What's the point of it? Well, this discussion has been going on in education for quite a while now, and it really got sparked by this guy named Sir Ken Robinson, who gave a TED Talk in 2006. It's since had 42 million views, as you can see. So clearly he touched a nerve. One of his main points was that schools actually hinder creativity because we're always looking for right answers as opposed to just leaving things open-ended. And why does that matter? Well, as we see uh, from the slide here, in 2020, the third most uh, popular skill for employers to have is creativity. They want that in people that they hire. So how do they get there? And how do you keep that going in your own life? Well, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my own journey. Uh, creativity has certainly been a part of my life way back to grade school when I wrote little plays, uh, mysteries, uh, uh, Christmas plays. And it was a way to get out of school, for one thing, because we could rehearse uh, during the school day and hang out with friends. But it was a way also for me to think about how could I get people together and do something creative? Well, that carried on right into high school. This is from my uh, high school yearbook. I went to Wheat Ridge High School, go Farmers. Uh, and while I was there, I did a lot of different creative things, most of which weren't connected to classes again. I wrote for the school newspaper, I did speech and debate, I did theater projects, all of which were designed to sort of keep me uh, invested in that part of it. And I'd be remiss not to point out that my uh, partner here, the other person in that slide under creativity, is uh, now known as Carmen Hall, and she's a parent here of two 10th graders, Nina and Tristan. So we both have kept creativity alive, and we're happy to say that we're here at CA to do that. Um, so I think part of the message I got from high school was that you can continue to pursue your academic interests and do that as much as you want, but also you can move forward and also do these other side projects. So I kept doing that right into college. I went to CU Boulder, and I was an English and Humanities major, and I you know, did the classes I needed to do and uh, carried on that way. But I also found some really good side projects uh, that I could do in, in theater. And uh, one of those groups, uh, this is a, a play I worked on called 1159, and I had the great idea that instead of a senior honors thesis, I would write a play. And what do you know, they went for it. Uh, so I was gonna write this play anyway, but then I used it for my senior honors thesis, and it was a great experience, one of the best I had. I performed it at Old Main Theater, which is the oldest building on campus there. And my first teaching job was at an all-girls boarding school in Connecticut, a uh, beautiful setting. And like most boarding schools, uh, if, you if you're a teacher there, you have to do everything. They ask you to coach, to teach, to do everything. So I found early on that just that process of being in education is very creative, um, as it is. And then I was asked to do other theater projects and uh, working in the theater there in the chapel. I kept that going right into my PhD work, where uh, I knew I had to be academic, but why not focus on two creative people, two documentary filmmakers, the Maisels brothers, and do my academic work that way. Meantime, I kept going uh, with my side projects in theater. I did uh, one here at Boston University, a very exciting project, uh, 40 plays in 10 hours. It was called the Boston Theater Marathon. And it was an exciting opportunity to be involved with so many cool people all around the area. And um, I found there that being in such good company kept inspiring me to do more. Since I've been here, I've done a, a number of projects. My most recent thing is working with a group in Aurora called Theater is Free Asia. And one of the things I've really focused on as I've gotten there is that writing monologues for me has become really a passion. Because I found that when you get into the perspective of one particular individual, that you can really go deep, and you can really build some empathy for that character. One of the key aspects to me about why creativity matters is it does build empathy. You get a chance to really think about the way other people think, and if you do a good job, especially in theater, you can convey that out to your audience as well, and build empathy in the audience members as well. 
Uh, now, collaboration is also a huge part of creativity. We, we sometimes think of artists and authors as sitting alone, toiling away, uh, doing their own thing, but ultimately they've got to bring their product out and put it in front of other people. And that collaborative part is really exciting. Uh, to me, that's a, a really amazing way to show some teamwork. And you get more out of the creative process that way. And also, since uh, in the last 10 years, brain research has really shown us a lot more about what it means to be uh, a creative person. We have new levels of understanding about how interconnected the brain really is, especially when we're uh, doing creative projects. We no longer have to think about left brain, right brain kinds of ideas in terms of the neurology of the brain. Instead, we can think more in terms of divergent and convergent thinking. Divergent thinking is, is a little bit like we usually think of with the brain. It's open to new possibilities, it's curious, it's seeking new adventures. Convergent is more the part of the brain we use when we're trying to get to a right answer, when we're trying to reduce the amount of ambiguity. But I think as Dorothy Parker's quote really underscores, the creative process really is tapping into both of those ways of thinking. Creativity brings the wild mind of the divergent thinking to uh, combine it with a disciplined eye of the convergent thinking. And before you know it, you really enhance your creative process. And the most innovative and creative outcomes uh, are the result. So for me in my life, this has been a hugely satisfying aspect of what I like to do. And I hope I've inspired you to keep your own creativity alive in your own world as well. Thank you very much.